Hey guys, it's Brian and welcome to my review for The Walking Dead World Beyond, Episode 7, Truth or Dare. So I actually really like this episode. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. World Beyond is actually surprising me. So the episode starts out and we have this like weird night vision thing going on with body, uh, you know, heat signatures with people and stuff like that. So and then we see, you know, some guy by this uh, machine and then we see people at the fence and we see people running away, their heat signatures, and then we see it's a nightmare that Huck is having. And then she is cleaning her gun, and, you know, she's uh, looking at some walkers. She kills them, scavenges some supplies, takes some boots, and she notices a military pin. We know that she was a Marine, and suddenly she notices uh, Felix and the CRM truck. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and then we get the intro for World Beyond, and... We have it where the truck passes by it. So, yeah. Um, anyways, we have Iris and Percy talking. You know, just uh, Iris is noticing his uh, collection of, like, art and stuff, I guess. And, yeah. I mean, I called it, like, a love triangle. I mean, did I call that, guys, or what? I mean, just, yeah. And Silas is just looking in the background, you know, kind of playing the third wheel, I guess, in the story. We have, you know... Uh, Tony showing Elton how to do magic or at least some of his tricks, uh, which is pretty interesting because it's like, you know, science and magic. They're kind of like opposites to each other. We have Huck giving, you know, Felix a uh, Mountain Dew, you know, and they uh, talk some more. They talk a little bit about Tony and Percy and the CRM truck and they need to refuel and Tony knows the place. And then we see that Tony has a, a CRM map, but they, there's nothing on it. So he puts a piece of paper with some light and they're able to find the refined oil spots which is actually really interesting this is pretty cool actually and we have percy saying that like they've noticed in the past some helicopter pads that were well stocked but abandoned they're not even guarded so yeah like this is what i was talking about the crm are so sloppy leaving their supplies i mean it's just crazy i don't know but uh, it's still very interesting so anyways we have iris looking at you know, some more of those colored papers and, you know, Percy goes to see her. She wants to know where her dad is. And, you know, so it, it kind of makes sense. You know, the map that Elizabeth gave her, she kind of, kind of wants to use that to find out. And later we have Tony talking to Felix and Huck about where exactly in New York they're going to go because they need a location. So I'm glad we finally got an answer to this because, yeah, that was a big problem in, in the beginning of the series. And we have another flashback with Huck and... You know, she's playing darts, and apparently her last name is Malik, and, you know, she is playing darts and everything, and, you know, she's talking with some guy, you know, you know, with her marine friends, and they notice the news, hospitals are being closed down, you know, so the apocalypse is happening. Later, we have Iris telling Percy to get hope, she's found something, and we see that they found a DNA strand on one of the maps, so they believe that it's their father, and they're going to go there in New York, so that's cool. And we have Silas, you know, still just looking. Uh, I knew something was coming. Anyways, we have uh, Tony and, you know, Felix talking. They're kind of celebrating. They're getting drunk. Or not drunk, but just drinking. And even the kids are drinking, but Silas is not going to have anything, which I'm kind of proud he didn't. But, like, seriously, the kids should not be drinking. I mean, it's it's a bad idea. You guys will see later on why I believe it's a bad idea to drink in the apocalypse. Anyway, we have Percy giving Iris his gloves. And, man, they're laying on thick. I mean, I really thought that, like, Silas was going to, like, turn green and hulk on, you know, hulk out on Percy. We have Elton trying to give Hope his jacket, you know what I mean? Just trying to uh, win some points with her, I guess, but it doesn't really work out. And, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think uh, Hope has feelings for him. And we have Percy. They're, so the plain truth are there, and he gives Iris a truth question, you know. And, yeah, we find out uh, some more about Iris and... Yeah, anyways, uh, Percy's reaction is just pretty funny. So anyways, we have Tony talking to Felix about how he kind of cared about himself until, you know, he met Percy and he wanted to do anything for him and he would do anything. He would even die for him, which I think sets up the uh, cliffhanger of the episode. So anyways, we have Percy asking Hope what the worst thing she ever did was. But, you know, Hope tries to play it off like, you know, with... Uh, putting like laxatives in coffee but he kind of sees something else and hope gets uncomfortable and she runs off meanwhile elton is you know trying to apologize for percy saying that like uh you know it was stupid and i don't know he doesn't say much he just randomly hugs her so yeah i mean it's it's kind of funny elton really is like the young eugene of the series and yeah anyways you know hope goes upstairs to you know be alone 
And meanwhile, we get another flashback with, you know, Huck, uh, not much there, but, you know, they're looking for any walkers, any threats, and, you know, they come across some walkers, and they actually do shoot them, and, you know, uh, Huck actually says they should aim for the head, so it's that's pretty smart, and they actually see people, but they use night vision, it doesn't really work so well, so they actually switch, switch to heat vision, which is actually really cool. It's cool seeing this. They have a low, uh, walkers have a lower body temperature, and, you know, Huck and them, they find some people, so Hope goes upstairs on the roof, and she comes across Huck, and she tells Huck how when the sky fell at the beginning of the apocalypse, she killed Elton's mom. She didn't even know it was Elton's mom, but, you know, she doesn't really know what to do with this. It's a lot on her plate. It's a big burden on her. And Huck just talks to her and says that, you know, she was just a kid and, uh, you know, like what happens, you kind of need to live with it. You can't change the past. So, yeah. Anyways, af after nighttime in, you know, in the morning, the characters go to the CRM uh I mean, not facility, but the place where they stored their, you know, uh, refined gasoline. And they leave Silas and Elton with the truck. So, anyways, after that, the characters go inside the facility. And Huck is talking to Hope again. You know, just about what happened. Like, you know, saying that you ha you did something for them to live. Which sets up Huck's flashback. So, back at Huck's flashback, they have gotten new orders from Central Command. To shoot anything that they come across, whether it's people alive or dead, which doesn't make sense because it's like, you know, like I don't know, it just does it doesn't make any sense. But anyways, back in the present, you know, uh, Hope is nowhere to be found, and Huck is looking for her. It's kind of weird that Hope just randomly disappeared, but then she finds Hope, and yeah, uh, she's being held at gunpoint by this guy named Walter. He got bitten. He's kind of delirious, and he thinks that they're part of the CRM. Meanwhile, with Felix and Tony, they're looking for the refined fuel, and they actually find it. Like, I actually knew it. I called it when I saw that uh, drawer. I knew that the supplies were in there. It made the most sense. So meanwhile, you know, uh, Huck is telling the guy that they're not part of the CRM. You know, they are just scavenging, and she even tells the guy to, you know, she sees that he's bit, and she tries to convince him that she can save him, uh, even hours after he's bit, which I kind of knew was a lie, but, you know, it was... Uh, I mean, I wasn't sure, I suppose. But anyways, you know, the guy, he is kind of delirious. He doesn't really believe Huck. And back in the flashback, you know, oh my gosh, he's, the guy says that they have to follow the orders because Central Command is like God or something. And uh, when he said that line, I wanted him to die. It's like, I don't care what orders you get, you know, it just, it, it, terrible orders, don't follow them. So back in the present, you know, this guy points the gun at Huck instead and... So anyways, we get back into the flashback and the, you know, the guy says that they're Marines. If they don't follow orders, they can be tried. And I wasn't buying it one bit. I'm like, this better not happen. And I mean, like I saw the Huck was not going to go through with this. This made no sense whatsoever. And we see Huck uh, take the guy, you know, uh, overwhelm him. And then in the flashback, we see people behind the fence. And this was actually pretty dark. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I really was starting to get like, extinction vibes from here you know what i mean i was just thinking i'm like okay uh i'm sure i mean i know it's a coincidence but still a anyways i still don't understand this like why would the soldiers have to they, they they know that walkers the infected are dead these people are not dead that doesn't make any sense uh sure they don't know how the inf infection spreads but they know that walkers have a lower body temperature and are are dead you know what i mean so why would they have to execute people behind the fence that doesn't make any sense and yeah, I mean, I was really thinking, I'm like, I, I kind of knew it wasn't really going to happen. But still, I mean, this is pretty dark to see, even in a Walking Dead story. But Huck is not having any of it. And this is when I started to really like her. So Huck decides that she's not going to do it. Instead of killing a dozen people behind those fences, innocent people, she is going to, uh, she kicks the generator, the power's off, and she turns on her night vision, and she starts killing her own soldiers, uh, comrades. And this is when I started liking her. I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, who wouldn't have done this at this point? Huck honestly did the right thing in the situation because, oh yeah, and the guy tries to stop her and we don't know his name, but we find out later. And we find out that her name is Jennifer too. It's not Huck. And this guy even says he doesn't know what she is now. And it's like, dude, like, I just kill this guy. And she actually does. She kills the guy in the present and the past. You know what I mean? And 
Hawk is so yeah, she kills both those guys in the same scene, I suppose, and she tells uh, Hope that they're alive and they have to just keep on living. Felix and the others come back and they see what happened, but Huck says they're okay. And Percy and Tony, they find some CRM, I don't know, codes or documents or just some notes. And I'm wondering what's going to happen with those later. Hopefully it's something good. Uh, so anyway, later that day, I think it's later that day, and they go to this like resort place. I don't know. It's like a lake house, beach house, whatever. And, you know, H Hope is just kind of distraught over what happened. Um, but they hope that the notes will help them find their dad. And Iris is talking about how, like, she's kind of worried they're splitting apart, I guess. So maybe Hope is going to tell Iris the truth that she killed Elton's mom. So at nighttime, we have the characters, you know, they are just talking. And Percy and Tony mention how after they get to New York, they're going to, you know, stay with them, maybe even longer. And we have uh, Percy asking Iris if he can have her his gloves back by the truck in an hour you know kind of like that a little bit cringy but it it kind of makes sense so yeah and we have silas once again i'm i'm just like oh wow he is gonna go off so you know we see uh, uh, silas looking at you know percy's stash of alcohol and you know elton talks with uh, hope later saying that he doesn't want to lose her and he shows her, her a magic trick uh kind of to make her smile i guess and you know elton talks about like nothing's impossible he he kind of believes that his mother and sister might still be alive out there, but we obviously know that's not the case, unfortunately. So we get another uh, final flashback scene with Huck in the past, or I guess, I mean, her name's Jennifer, you know, Lance Corporal Jennifer Malik, but uh, she's walking with the people. She's kind of getting them through a tunnel. I'm not really sure if those people are still alive now or if they died at the campus colony, but Huck did the right thing. So uh, she saved these people, at least for some time. And, you know, Huck is talking to Hope about how she is a good person and that, you know, Elton can't find out. It's going to crush him. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, we get actually another flashback, sorry, about uh, about Huck. And she kind of makes the same scar that the guy had. So I think his name was Huck. Her name was Jennifer, but she took on his identity because, I don't know, maybe she couldn't cope with what she did. But honestly, Huck did the 100% right thing in that situation. I would have done that. I think anyone would have done that in the right mind. So, yeah, she should have no regrets what she did. We get a hug scene between Huck and Hope, and at nighttime we have Iris uh, going to the truck where Percy said to meet her, and she sees this kind of small museum thing that uh, Percy made for her. So uh, I don't know how he made it. I mean, like a small Mona Lisa and all these pictures of other things. But I mean, she said she wanted to visit a museum. So yeah, um, Iris is just you know really happy, and she sleeps uh, in the truck. And at nighttime she's looking for Percy. And wow, yeah, she sees uh, Tony, he's dead, there's bloody footprints, and she sees a window that's broken, so she thinks Percy maybe escaped or something, and the other characters see, and yeah, they find Silas's wrench, it's all bloody, I mean, just, I did not expect this, honestly, but I knew it was Silas in the bathroom stall, I just knew it, I saw it coming, and I really thought it was going to be per uh, Percy, but yeah, somehow Silas hulked out on, you know, uh, Tony, so anyways, uh, Silas is like drunk, passed out. His his boots are bloody. So that was a cool uh, call back to the beginning. And we have Silas just looking at the group. So like as if he did, doesn't know what he did. So after that, the episode ends. So yeah, I mean, this was a great episode. 8.5. It actually uh, made Huck a pretty, uh, very interesting character, honestly. And we got a really cool cliffhanger. So in the promo for next week, we have someone looking at the stars. And it's actually Silas. He has been tied up outside you know, for what he did. And the characters, Felix, are talking about how he wanted a fresh start. Maybe this is it for him. And they're just trying to figure out what to do with him. And Iris is, we hear Iris talking and saying that Percy and Tony had enemies. So we don't see Percy anywhere. So maybe he ran off or I don't think he's dead too. And I don't think he did it. Uh, we have them burying Tony. So it looks like Tony's body. I don't think Percy is dead, but they got to explain what happened. And, you know, Iris is upset. It looks like she's upset about, you know, Percy, but it's got it's Tony. So I don't know what's going on. Also, Silas is free. It doesn't look like he's restrained here. So that's uh, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I did not expect they were going to do this with Silas. We get a flashback of him when I believe he killed his father. So, uh, yeah, we're finally going to see what happened. And man, uh, Silas, uh, I did not expect this for this character. I thought he was going to be like a gentle giant character like Tyrese from the show. But no, uh, it really looks like they might be making him. 
a much di uh, more different character. We have Felix talking about how, you know, he the, uh, Silas wanted a fresh start. Maybe this is it for him, you know. And after that, we get a nighttime shot of Elton walking to a tied up Silas at the playground. And he says that they're going to leave him behind, like the group. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know if they're going to let him to the walkers because, you know, they leave him tied up still. But it looks like they're going to try and continue the mission without him. So that I'm very curious to see what happens. We have a walker in the playground coming towards Silas as he's tied up. And we see that Silas is, you know, kind of scared and uh, trying to get the walker off of him. So I'm very curious to see what happens. So, yeah, guys, that's it for my review of The Walking Dead World Beyond Episode 7, Truth or Dare. I really thought this would be a cringy episode, but it was really good. You know, the new characters, Percy and Tony, were pretty good. Uh, Huck actually had a very interesting background. And honestly, I can't wait to see what happens next week. And the, the cliffhanger with Silas, I mean, I'm very interested now in the show. So, all right, guys, that's it for my review. Please let me know what you thought down below. Until next time, guys, take care. Bye.